Okay, welcome to the Grail of Truth Bible Study. We're doing chapter 36 of Exodus, the ESV version. Uh, if you want to participate, you can go to uh, blueletterbible.org and uh, uh, go to chapter 36 of Exodus in the English Standard Version and, and uh, uh, read along. Uh, if you want to participate in these videos, um, just leave a comment or like and subscribe and let us know, and we'll let you know when the time of the videos are, and you can participate in that as well. And we have Sharon online with us, who's uh, continuing with the Bible study, and uh, we'll go ahead and start with Exodus chapter 36 in verse 1. So, uh, Bezalel, excuse me, Bezalel and Ohaliab, and every craftsman in whom the Lord has put skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. And Moses called Bezalel, uh, Bezalel uh, and Ohaliab, and every craftsman in whose mind the Lord had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him to come to do the work. And they received from Moses all the contribution from the people of Israel and brought for, uh, and brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. Uh, all the people of Israel had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. Uh, they still kept bringing them free will offerings every morning. So the craftsmen who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary, each from the task that he was doing, and said uh, to Moses, the people bring much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and the word was proclaimed throughout the camp, <clears throat> let no man or woman do anything more for the contribution of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from, bring, from bringing for the material they had was sufficient to do all the work and more. And all the craftsmen among the workmen made the tabernacle with ten curtains. They were made of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet yarns with the cherubim skillfully worked. The length of each curtain was twenty-eight cubits and the breadth of each curtain was four cubits. All the curtains were the same size. A uh, cubit is about eighteen inches, so about a foot and a half. Um, verse 10. He coupled five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he coupled to one another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain of the first set. Likewise, he made them on the edge of the outermost curtain of the second set. He made 50 loops on the one curtain and made 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set. Uh, the loops were opposite one another. He, and he made uh, 50 clasps of gold and coupled the curtains one to another with clasps, so the tabernacle was single whole. He also made curtains of goat's hair for the, for the tent over the tabernacle. He made 11 curtains. The length of each curtain was 30 cubits, and the breadth of each uh, curtain was 4 cubits. Uh, the 11 curtains were the same size. He coupled uh, 5 curtains by themselves and 6 curtains by themselves, and he made 50 loops on the edge of the outermost curtain uh, of the one set and 50 loops on the edge of the, outer, of the other connecting curtain. And he made fifty clasps of bronze to couple the tent together that it might be a single whole. And he made the tent uh, a covering of tanned ram skins and goat skins. Then he made upright frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Ten cubits was the length of the frame and, uh, and a cubit and a half of the breadth of each frame. Each frame had two tenons uh, for fitting together. He did this for all the frames of the tabernacle. The frames of the tabernacle he made thus, 20 frames for the south side, uh, and he made 40 bases of silver under 20 frames, two bases under one frame and its, uh, for its two tenons, and two bases under the next frame for its two tenons. For the second side of the, of the tabernacle on the north side, he made 20 frames, and there are 40 bases of silver, two bases under one frame and two bases under the next frame. For the rear of the tabernacle westward, he made six frames. He made two frames for the corners of the tabernacle uh, in the rear, and, uh, and they were separate be beneath uh, but joined at the top at the first ring. He made uh, two of them this way for the other two corners. There were eight frames with their bases of silver, 16 bases under uh, every frame, two bases. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the frames of uh, one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars uh, for the frames of of the tabernacle at the rear westward. And he made the middle bar to run from end to end halfway up the frames. And he overlaid the frames with gold and made their rings of gold for holders for bar uh, for the bars and overlaid uh, the bars with gold. 
Uh, he made the veil of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen with cherubim skillfully worked into it. Uh, uh, into it, he made it. And uh, and for the and for it, he made four pillars of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold, uh, and he cast for them four bases of silver. Uh, he also made a screen and uh, screen for the entrance of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen and embroidered with needlework. And its five pillars uh, with their hooks he overlaid their capitals and their fillets uh, were of gold, but their five bases were of bronze. So again, another pretty simple chapter. Basically, it's instructing how he actually went about, they actually went about making and constructing the uh, the tabernacle. So, um, and my, go ahead. And my summary just says, children of Israel bring more than enough offerings for the sanctuary. Construction of the outer parts of the sanctuary begins as prescribed in chapter 26. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> one thing I should point out is there's probably and most likely um, certain prophetic or mystical meanings in each of these things, you know, like Easter eggs. So like the fact that there's like 11 curtains here or, you know, 50 uh, uh, islets, you know, used for the curtains and all this kind of stuff. Those all probably have specific meanings. And there's uh, ancient Jewish texts um, like uh, the Zohar and things that talk about the mystical meanings of the, the sanctuaries and the tabernacle and so forth. So just to be aware of that, I mean, I, there, it would be a lot to try to go into it now, and I don't know them all. I'd really have to, to study it out. But there are probably... Oh, you haven't looked it up? No, there's probably a whole ton of Easter eggs in each of these things as far as like what they represent or what they're connected to. Um, oh, I thought you would have found all that. No, I, I, this is a part that I haven't studied out as well. So, but just okay. to be aware that it's 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 known about and it's there. So these things all have significant meanings. So, just, hmm. I mean, and it's there. There's more than one reason why this is all being put into the Bible, because right? everything in the Bible is put there for a specific purpose, and it's not just so that people know exactly what the tabernacle consisted of and how it was built. And if you ever get to build another one, like that's how you do it, you know. It, there's there's uh, spiritual meanings behind all these things so um, but anyways that's uh, that's chapter 36 pretty straightforward so did you have any other questions on it no nope. okay so with that we will move on to chapter 37 um, in the next video and we appreciate everyone who watched this video if you want uh, to continue continue on just go ahead and check out the next video if you want to participate in these uh, Bible studies um, just uh, leave a comment below. We'll let you know when the time is and you can join in as well. And again, all, uh, please comment, uh, like, and subscribe. And we appreciate you watching the video. Thanks very much.